Hello everyone. In my most recent video, I talked about an essay by Sigmund Freud called Remembering, Repeating, and Working Through. In that essay, Freud talks about repetition and the fact that we might repeat some patterns of relationship, ways of relating to other people that are hurtful both to ourselves and to the other person. And that we repeat these patterns not necessarily knowing that we are repeating them. He also argues that psychological development and the work of therapy involves, in many cases, it requires working through these repetitions, not abandoning them, not going somewhere else and doing something completely new, but letting these repetition, the tendency to repeat past mistakes, letting that tendency arise once again, but this time catching it and trying to uh, have a more authentic relationship with reality, with what is actually in front of us, the, the person, the people who are really there, not with what is in our memory, what is coming out of our past. So working through uh, repetition, remembering, consciously remembering, and having a conscious relationship with our tendencies. In this video, I want to work through an example, an example that I think illustrates these points. And the example is Barney Stinson, the character Barney Stinson, who is a relatively well-known fictional character from the TV show How I Met Your Mother, which ran for, I think, eight, nine years. So let's go through some of the characteristics of Barney Stinson, the ones that are particularly relevant to our discussion here. And we want to especially point to, point out the ways in which he's repeating certain things, compulsively repeating again and again some things in his behavior, at the same time, he is trying to not repeat some other things. So at this, on the one hand, he is repeating his casual relationships, his one-night stand. But on the other hand, he is, through that repetition, he's avoiding the repetition of something else, which is true intimacy, a kind of relationship in which he is really invested, he's really vulnerable and open to the other person. So on the one hand, we, have, we see him having lots of casual relationships, one-night stands, he often lies in order to get women into bed. And lying, deception, these are all things that keeps himself and his emotions at a distance from the other person. So he avoids uh, intimacy and ends the relationship as soon as possible. And the repetition, uh, we can here speculate. We can talk, talk and think that repetition of these one-night stands, uh, which has almost a compulsive quality, serving a function. And that, that function is the reason why he has to continue. That is because he is covering up a deeper story, something that is going on and it might come up, arise into consciousness, that he's trying his best to not let it come into his awareness. And that is the fact that he doesn't have real intimacy. It is safe, in fact, I think it is safe to assume that every time one of these casual relationships end, that there is sadness in that ending, even though the relationship is short-term, casual, involves deception, but it is it at least slightly hurtful. And that is why, because of that hurtful nature of these, these relationships, there are many, many of them, he must compensate for that sadness, for that emptiness, by doing some extra psychological work. And what he does is that he frames these casual relationships as conquests. He frames them within the stories that then he shares with his friends. So that, yes, the story taken in, on itself in isolation, it is sad, it is about hurting other people, but then he frames them in a very glamorous lifestyle in, in such a way that it seems pleasant, at least superficially. So that framing is part of what he does. It's like he's taking a glass that is not half empty, almost completely empty, but he makes it full with that story and with that ex extra behavior and the glamorous lifestyle. Something else that we should note, we can note about Barney, is that whenever he gets serious, whenever he finds someone, falls in love, becomes, uh, enters into a serious relationship, he becomes a kid. He regresses into a chi childlike uh, quality. He becomes simple and almost cartoonish in how he behaves around the, uh, the beloved person. So that is, uh, in other words, he is now repeating something else, a more ancient, more an older story uh, that is also another kind of repetition that he was trying not to allow for the repetition of this story. That's why he was having all those one-night stands. This, this older story is about 
real intimacy. It's about real vulnerability. And this is something else that is repeated now, coming, at, coming from an older place in his, from his childhood. This is a story about being in, feeling something, being invested, being intimate. And because he has rep repressed this older story for a long time, he has kept himself in that regard underdeveloped. And he's still unskilled because he hasn't had practice. He hasn't developed maturity. He's still immature. That's why he's childlike. Now, in his case, working through is uh, necessary. Of course, he has to allow that ancient story about investment to, to occur, to happen. He has to allow himself to feel the, the vulnerability, to, to make the decision to commit to someone, to intentionally let those painful, hurtful feelings arise again, and then try to work through them. Even though he knows that he's not good at them, he has to try to be, become good at them slowly with the help of his uh, partner, with the intention of improving. So this is what Freud means by remembering, repeating, letting those tendencies that we are not good at, letting those tendencies to come back, this time with the hope of, with the intention of improving. Now, one final note I wanted to mention, something else that I find quite interesting about the, the compulsion, this repetition of one-night stands, Barney's one-night stands. Freud would say that this, these one-night stands, these casual relationships that involve deception, that involve lying to the other person, this also is a repetition of a story that happened, an experience that happened in Barney during his childhood. He was the one, the one who was originally lied to, originally neg neglected and abandoned. At least he felt abandoned. He is, what he's doing in these casual relations is that he's repeating that original story about deception, about abandonment, about being alone. He's repeating them, but now he's establishing control over the story. He's repeating them, but he says to himself with his actions, he says that I am in control now. I'm repeating the story about deception, about abandonment, but I am the one now who lies, who abandons, who is in charge, who's in control, who's controlling the scenario. Now he's the subject. This is some, actually, I'm repeating almost verbatim Freud's ideas about how we repeat the scenario, but we switch uh, the position from subject to object uh, with the intention of gaining control. But of course, if this goes on, even though he is in control, even though he is the one who is abandoning the other person, but the story remains the same if he continues like this. He is stuck and he remains stuck in the same story, which is about lying, about deceit, and about the failure to achieve intimacy, which is to say the story is about loneliness, not about being with other people. The getting unstuck uh, is not just about finding an authentic relationship to the present with a person who is actually there. It might also involve, and this is now we, we can go a little bit beyond Freud, we can say that it involves getting unstuck from the story and developing a new story. It also involves reinterpreting the past, not just saying this happened to me in the past, this is the, the, my, the past history that I had, and I can blame it. We can also find a way of reinterpreting the, the, Barney's relationship. He can find a way to reinterpret his relationship, his story with his parents. And that can go parallel. It can go hand in hand with his authentic relationship with the present. Reinterpreting the past and renewing his presence in, in, with other people in the here and now. All right. I think that's good. Uh, thank you for your attention. I will speak with you in the next video.